Crystal Ambrose, who joins us now from Malmo in Sweden. Crystal, apart from the fact that I'm surprised <laughs> you've exchanged the Bahamas for Sweden in winter, I'm so happy you're on the program. What inspired you to set this up? Thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm missing home for sure. It's definitely cold outside. Uh, but what inspired me to start this movement was going and seeing firsthand the impacts of plastic pollution on the ocean. Uh, in 2012, I sailed to the Western Garbage Patch uh, in the North Pacific Gyre, which is a huge circulating current that traps marine debris or marine plastics and trash. And I saw right there with my own eyes, you know, how my lifestyle on land was impacting animals and the ocean that I love so dearly. Um, so that really left me fired up to go back home and make my best to make a difference. Is that the plastic is patch that, that plastic is supposed patch? to be bigger than France? Yes, you know, this is 22 times the size of Texas. It's this floating island. And actually it's not, um, it's the opposite. It's tiny, tiny pieces of microplastics and other large plastic debris like big net balls or fishing uh, or discarded fishing gear and nets that just roam around the ocean. Um, so it's, it's more stark than we think. It's not just centralized in one place, but there's no place in the ocean where you cannot find ocean plastic or marine debris. Now, you've already managed to persuade uh, the government in the Bahamas to take up your cause, and they've instituted a law that makes it more difficult for people to use plastic in the Bahamas. Tell us about that. Yes. Yeah, so in January of 2020, it was instituted that all single-use plastics, inclusive of um, plastic forks and other cutlery, straws, uh, mass balloon releases, plastic bags and styrofoam uh, would be outlawed uh, in the Bahamas. And this was led uh, by, youth, by my youth delegation and myself uh, in 2018. And it was further uh, concreted by the Ministry of Environment and the Minister of Environment, um, the Honorable Ramal Ferreira in the Bahamas, um, who had also had interest and had been working behind the scenes on this. Uh, but seeing the youth in front of him, he said it really, you know, gave him the momentum to push this forward even faster. So how do you educate in your Bahamas plastic movement? How do you educate the people of your country about the dangers of this kind of pollution? So our major audience is youth, and we engage them through a tuition-free program called our Plastic Pollution Education and Ocean Conservation Summer Camp. And this is a free program where students come and they get really hands-on. Uh, they learn about the ocean, you know, not just everything that's impacting it, but we go to the beach and we have fun. We play and we figure out why we love it, you know, and then we figure out why we need to protect what we love. Uh, so they're doing scientific research. They're out on the ocean trawling for microplastics. Uh, they're dissecting the stomachs of fish and birds, looking for signs of plastic ingestion. And they're using their voices um, to raise awareness in their communities, in their country, uh, as to why plastic is, is so bad and why it's having a drastic impact on our environment. And more importantly, they give feasible solutions about what people in the community can do about it. So even though we focus a lot on plastic, it's a lot about youth empowerment. Crystal, I mean, obviously the Bahamas, and there are many other countries like your home nation, uh, they rely on the beauty of their beaches and uh, the cleanliness of their oceans, not just for the local people, but also for the large tourism industry. Do you think there's enough international attention being paid to this particular problem? Definitely. Plastic within the last few years is transitioned um, to a dinner table conversation, you know, so almost everywhere that you go, uh, people are aware of the impacts of plastic pollution to a certain extent. And I feel like within the last few years, there's been a lot of attention um, garnered. However, there's still some people that, that don't know and that don't understand the true implications, um, not only just on the environment, but on human health, uh, the environmental justice aspects of it, uh, the industry aspects of, of plastic um, production as well. So it's right up there with, with climate change and other ocean acidification and uh, ocean warming issues. So it's top three. And it so richly deserves to be, as far as anybody who loves the planet is concerned, I suppose. Crystal Ambrose, and you're certainly one of those people. Thank you so much for talking to us, Crystal. Thanks Take care.